Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is the designer for From the Depths. And in this episode, um, we're going to be looking at a new ship for our campaign and a couple of little bits that I have been working on, so I'll show you what I've come up with. So, as a starting point, um, this is our rib that we started um, up with. And, you know, it's a bit cannon fodder really rather than being of any real use it's got a little cannons and some missiles um, it's only about 260 blocks so it's not intended to be fast it was just something very quick uh, sorry when I say quick quick to build it was a, a an emergency measure just to get us over that first battle which it did successfully um, now we need something a little bigger and because of, we're going to choose to do things which are a bit more classical style, I'm going to build ships that are not a replica, but are based upon real-world ships. So, one that I'm, I'm just going to quickly show is, you know, um, the evolution of ships, etc. You, you went soon from sort of some sort of rib to a sailing ship. So this is an all-wooden, or just about all-wood, sailing schooner that I uh, uh, quickly put together. So um, we have a nice little control deck here and it is very NPC controlled here. We've got quite a few NPCs just manning some some small simple cannons uh, and other items. Uh, it's got a fairly simple schooner style uh, round sails um, on here, you know, four mast. We could make these bigger but I just like the looks of that. That seemed to, to fit in. Um, Speed-wise, it goes depending on the in the direction of the wind. And uh, by the way, I've I've noticed that the flag fly, f flies into the wind, and not against the wind, which is a bit weird. But oh well, never mind. Eh. Um, so you know, we're if if the wind's coming from that direction, we're leaning over that way. But then the flag is flying in that direction. That makes no sense anyway. Uh, so it gets up to about a speed of about nine ten meters a second when it's got a good uh wind on it and into the wind etc it will still do a nice six uh meters a second so it's not in, um terrible good points about it takes no power there is no pa engines on here whatsoever so there's no power no no propeller screws required um so it runs without using any fuel whatsoever. So you can see it's covered in, there's lots of storage crates in here for metal, natural, and we've even down the bottom here, we have some ammo and uh, fuel. Uh, and we have a, a little, we can walk through here uh, with some doors so our um, AI can come in here and quite happily um, make its way through the ship couple of bits I haven't done yet just thinking about it I haven't put any spares crates on there and some uh, uh, repairs but we'll sort that one out later um, okay so that's a little schooner but as you can tell not really gonna withstand any sort of combat because it is a wooden ship you know there's this wood is not gonna survive anything except simple other simple weapons but this ship is only to be designed for moving around the resources to the various areas so I'll build a fleet of these as such to move around um, resources between bases or to resupply fleets uh, that need to do repairs etc which is one of the reasons why I just want to put on a, um, some spares crates and some um, repair drones on here. Okay so if I just go back to our main ship so that's all well and good but it's not going to be any good at attacking a ship. So next stage is going to be what was classed as the ironclad um so what they did is they the first evolution is they took a, a obviously a larger ship than that but a, a ship a wooden ship and just encased it in metal and that was the first use um, so, and there's two styles of ship one was the ship made of iron um and the wooden ship which was iron clad um, now, actually, surprisingly, ships made purely of metal, so they were thin-skinned, so they weren't armoured, but they were made of metals. They started, actually, in about the 1830s, 1840s, but they didn't make the first true ironclad. That is something which was 
the, used the iron specifically as armour until about the 1850s, uh, middle, late 1850s. At those times, you had ships, um, there was the French uh, uh, Galore, I think it was, and they, the French also made some battery ships, and the um, na uh, you, uh, Navy, um, Royal Navy created the HMS Warrior, and a few others, which were basically big gun ships, still using like the old uh, rows of guns, just metal on the side. Now obviously in the 1860s early we had the American Civil War, there was the Monitor and the, um, I can't remember the name of the other one, there was Monitor and the, someone's going to correct me but put it in, in the thing there, I can't remember, that had the first battle and that was the first battle of Ironclads and basically it, it was a draw because basically neither ship had a weapon that could penetrate the other ship. Um, and that sort of set the tone for ironclads. There was some other um, ships around with turrets and ironclads before them, but that was the first ironclad battle, so to speak. Anyway, wh what I'm going to look at is something uh, slightly on from them. Um, and we're going to look at a broadside-based ship. So th the guns, we're not going to use turrets. This is going to be the first elevation. Uh, evolution of of the ship so we're going to use metal as armor but it's mainly going to be wood for most of the structure with metal in various areas and we're going to look at uh, what is called a center battery sometimes called a casement or such in that and this is going to be a basic basically how ships in world of, um, from the depths you should think about building your ships to be protective and the basic building technique you know, uh, or that I use anyway for building the ships. Uh, so we're going to use a center casement style uh, or center battery, uh, which is heavily armored, and the rest of the ship is less armored. Um, it's going to be similar. There was a, a few ships. HMS Minotaur uh, is one that I, I remember, um, which was based upon this design. It was basically a frigate. I think there was. Um, uh, a few others as well, or we'll try and find some names, um, that followed this particular design. So, first thing to think about when you're building a ship is what weapons are you going to put on there? So I've been playing around with some cram cannons, and we're going to stick with cram cannons, although there is advanced cannons and a few other bits and pieces, we're going to stick with cram cannons for the moment, mm. just as a to see how far we can go with these before we move on to advanced cannons, etc. So, this over here, as a starting point, was just a very, um, has no gauges, this is more a fast firing gun, as you can see, fires relatively fast, um, if I just get some details, uh, 0.85 seconds, um, but hasn't got much damage, so it's not really going to penetrate um, things very much. If I just uh, don't think I can actually connect onto that wood, but it even has a problem c going through one block of wood. But this could be a typical anti aircraft style gun, which we might use, say, on the starter fort. So we need something a little bit bigger. So the next size up is got some um, gauges on it. So let me just um, have a look on here. So we've got some gauge blocks. So this is up to a um, 300 millimeters, 12 inch, which in real world terms is not very big, but in from the depths, sorry, in real world terms is very big, but in, in from the depths, that's a, a small size cannon. Um, now it's fairly small, and this is gonna be like a, a starting point. Now we've got a little target up here, two blocks of wood. So if I get close to it and I can take the gun over. Now the first shot is gonna be very powerful. So we fire there, and then we reload, and then we fire again. So you can see it's still at, it's having a problem even getting through one block of wood. If we just get what the stats are. So one, um, as a 4.66 armor piercing and explosive damage of 49. So it's, it's doing a bit of damage, but it's not... Whoops, I need to get back aiming, there we go. It's not that powerful. 
So it's getting through wood, but it's got a reasonable reload speed eventually. So we need something a little bigger. Certainly for our main guns, that would be okay for taking out small ships and as good as a secondary gun. And we might have some deck guns like that just firing this. But this is going to be a main gun. So this one is 652mm. Uh, so, yeah, much bigger gun. Um, again, real world, this is this is bigger, I think, than... I don't think... I think the largest I remember is about 450mm was ever the largest gun. Um, uh, certainly that was put on a ship. Um, so, yeah, this is significant size. But has, as you can see, lots more ammo, HE, etc. And you can see the size of it is a little deeper, etc. Um, so now what we've, our target is, is against metal. So we've got some metal backed up with some wood. And this time when we fire, I'm going to fire the first shot. Um, the first shot you fire is going to be very powerful. You can see that's just uh, totally wiped out that that uh, whole area. So uh, yep, we'll get that let that rebuild. There we go. Now the second shots you do will be less. You can see that it's still building up, and that's due to the packing of the shell, uh, the way that cram sh cannons work. They're building the shell as you go along. Then the longer you leave it, the more powerful that shot will be. So yep, there we go again. But in reality, after the first shot, so we'll fire that one away, subsequent shots, and we're just going to wait for them to, this, this to reload. You'll notice it'll reload when it, the barrel turns. There we go. It's loaded with the shell. It's less powerful than that very first shot we did, but still got some power. But it is this is going through metal. So this is the gun which is going to be our main battery gun and what would I'm doing tend to do is have four of these on each side of the uh, ship within the build so with that gives us an idea of the scale we're gonna need uh, so in this centrally armored casement and we'll have a few of these possibly on the upper deck just as what they call chase cannons and also just for a slightly more close range support of the vessel so okay we've gone through guns and we've decided what we're gonna fit now we have to build the ship so if we go into here and we're gonna need to uh, do a new object and make that lovely first block which we'll, we'll build it over here so um, with that in mind, we now know that we've got a depth of about four, a width of about five. The first thing we need to do is define where those guns are going to go. And that's going to define the rest of the size of the ship we're going to build. Now I'm going to start it this in wood, uh, because this will be still a, generally a wood-based ship. So the first item I'm going to have to build is the gun deck and everything else around it. So, and that's going to set our width in this particular case. Because we have a width of four, plus we need a little bit of a gap between the guns, we need to quite, this is going to be quite a wide ship. Let's just go to there, and we're then going to need a little bit of armour. So let's just see how that fits in with our idea. So if we just set this as our centre gun, so if I now, I'm just going to uh, put some basic blocks in to replicate what we have over there effectively. So uh, that, if that was the there, we'll just put the firing piece in we put a firing piece in just there and then we had six-way connectors going back and we'll go there okay we can bring that back one more actually which is fine 
So if we take that off there, put it there, and this time put the firing piece on again. And then down the center will be, um, uh, this will be our gun deck. Now, we can either just say, right, it's an open gun deck. Yeah, we'll have an open gun deck. So this is where you can walk down in the center. Uh, and then over here, we would have our armor. So this this level, I think, will be all armored. When, and we're going to do a double level of armor. We would start the armoring, say, with wood, and then put on the outside a metal on the outside of it. So it's got a, 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 a metal wood type of armoring system. We might even go to a double width on there in some places. Okay, so the next stage is going to be how many of these have we got, and our width, I think, is uh, one... Oh, just one from the centre. That's cool. So what I'm going to do is just mark out where the guns will go. So that's four sets of guns, slightly forward, um, which is fine. We can, we can, I can rework that if needed. Uh, we might just put that. Let's, let's just say there. Take that one out there. So yeah, that that will be our our gun platform. So we can now see how. It's going to be shaping up as far as size. Right, what I'll now do is um, build a hull. So now what we've got to do is look at building underneath this a standard hull formation so that it'll actually float. And we need to get a bit of angle on there. We, we're going to have to elongate this a little bit um, to ensure that we get some good slope. Um, etc. So we'll get the, the, the first part of it floating um, and uh, mainly using wood underneath. We'll use some metal, um, but mainly the metal, this is an iron clad. So we're going to build this in wood mainly and then clad it in iron or metal blocks in this case afterwards. And that's the basic theory we are following here to, to replicate some of those early warships of the late 18 well uh, well it'd be late late 1800s so uh, what would be coming out in about the 1860s 1870s um sort of side. well the 1860s certainly so let me just get this hull built up and then i will be back with you okay so i have got a basic shape for our hull now it's riding a little high in the water uh, we have got put a keel on there with. I use a lot of stone on this because uh, it's it's more efficient than using a lot of lead. But we might have to replace with some lead later on. Now it's a little high, but we've got a lot of metal to go on this. And once the metal goes on there, I'm guessing this is going to come down a lot. I also once I've put the metal on, I will put some wood here just to shape this uh, section here a little bit better make it look a little nicer. So I think what we need to now put on is uh, the items which are going to cause a lot of weight. Now the gun system is going to be an obvious amount of weight and and the armour for this uh, gun deck, the main deck as such, will also create a fair bit of armour and then we're going to have to look, think of our engines which we'll talk about in a second. So what I'm now going to do is we'll follow the basic design we had over here which from memory is, let's see, hardeners, yep, a fairly basic design, nothing uh, abnormal there so that we should be able to cover cover that so it's a fairly simple design of cram cannon six-way connector three of them three um, auto loaders on each side then we put a um, high explosive 
on each of these. And underneath was a hardener to give it some uh, armour piercing. Oops, that one there is not right. There we go. There, and then finally a uh, ammo boxes to give it some ammo retention. And the only other side is barrels. We need to, well, not the only other side, barrels. We need to think it was motor driven only. I think it was eight, about eight barrels. Uh, we'll go and have a look at this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight barrels. And the rest is all gauges. To give us that nice size. Uh, so there we are. We're up to 652, 8.67 seconds. 1737. Let's just see if that... Um, matches here 8.67 yep and i okay one thing i change on this let's just go into the gun itself and uh, we go into q is minimum pack time we change to eight seconds uh, sorry nine seconds so it will always pack nine seconds of ammo and it will always have a one degree fire it waits it's got a one degree accuracy before firing if possible. Obviously the gun's got a larger than one, but it means that its aim is within one degree of the target. So I've got to do that on each of the weapons. There we go. So um, let me just build all of them in place, and then I will look at the armoring of this deck um, and see how that works. So uh, the only other bit I've got is where the fire controller is going to go. Um, and if I put that on each of those, the fire controller will go between. Each fire controller will control two guns. So by putting the local weapon controller here, it controls two weapons. So I can... There we go. So we just need four weapon controllers and we have the... Uh, controlling all four guns and we will need a uh, receiver on that so we just put the receiver on the back like that like so and we won't have to worry about a fail safe because these are fairly much only firing outwards it's not a turreted so that should be enough all we need for that so as i say let me just build those up and i will be back shortly and i have now completed the main gun deck and I shorted the barrels a little bit just to make them look a little bit better because they didn't fit in sticking out so far. They didn't fit in with the style of the ship we're aiming at. I have also armoured up the uh, side. So we've got two levels of metal, level of wood, and then there is the metal and or gauges behind. So we've got quite a bit of armour and it goes down below a little, while, a little way as well. Let me just take it out of the water. Now the front isn't armoured, so that is always a, uh, but that's the way to put storage and other elements in here, um, and the back may well have the engines etc in there. Um, so yep, we've got the, the primary parts of this now uh, working, let me just um, fill in that part there so that that fits in, and I'll put the same front to act as a bit of a bulkhead. Oops, that's not the way I wanted it to go. That was because I was pointing in the wrong direction. Right, so if I go here and then go that way, there we go. So that's filled that in there. We can have that as a as a um ah, did it again? Oh well never mind. Um we can have that as an airtight container effectively, um, as well as a little bit of armour just to, in case it takes any breaches at the front. Let me just cl clean this up and back in a second. Right, next stage then, um, we've got the basic ship. Do we, we need to now look at propulsion for this ship. Now, 
Um, the classic ship we're aiming at is was one of the first, or would be first steam driven. Part of the reason they went to the ironclads is they were able to have steam engines. So to replicate that, what we're going to have, we're going to have an, obviously a, an engine, a normal sort of engine, but um, we're not going to make it overly powerful. And we are going to have sails on this still as well. So we're going to still have this as a sailing ship, but it will effectively be um, backed up by a standard um, engine. And that's gone in the wrong way around, so let me just remove that round. So, but okay, let's start with a standard engine. So we're gonna. This is gonna be basic. We might. Whoops, not superchargers, crankshafts. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Crankshafts. We're gonna make this a large, most probably not that efficient. We're only gonna need to drive a few bits and pieces, some ammo production. Um, uh, which again, we'll try to make it. This is less powered. We're not gonna have anything uh, fancy on this. Uh, we didn't have this as a low power engine, so um, we're going to need some cylinders is the most important thing on this. We're going to have many cylinders. There we go. We're not, as I say, we don't, we're not after a lot of power on this. I'm not sure what power output we'll go for, but certainly not very much. Uh, we won't use turbochargers. What else would we, would be applicable to this? Uh, we are going to need some exhausts, uh, obviously, and we will route the exhausts um, throughout the system to, to make sure they possibly exit um, somewhere nice, so we get a nice little bit of a puff of a smoke, may as well make it look nice. Uh, possibly at the front here, just somewhere around here I think would be nice to have some um, some puff of smoke coming out up there, it would be cool. Uh, okay, so we, now we're not going to be able to do this, we need some carburetors. Uh, obviously we don't have... Where are we? I've gone into exhausts. We need some carburetors on here. So if we put the carburetors in the center, like that. What sort of power is that giving us at the moment? 800. I mean, as I said, this is not a hyper-powered engine. So let's just see if I can put some cylinders on here. This is, uh, as I say, a crappy design. Uh, it's not going to be efficient. It's just lots of... There we go. So we got a good bit of power out of that. Yeah, look, there's a whole load of power there. I think that's more than more than we need for this uh, this particular design. Uh, it's fuel usage per second is we just want it being run at very low um, speed, basically. And its ramp up time is going to be really high. So we're going to put a ramp up time about 7 seconds. Yeah. Uh, decay, that's okay. Responsiveness, um, it's not very, very responsive. This is a steam engine, remember. Uh, and we'll, we'll set it so it doesn't go too high. It's only going to go up to half, half the actual power. So it's only going to use a bit of fuel on this. So it's not very fuel efficient. That was one of the problems of these early engines. They were not very fuel efficient at all. Uh, and they used basically crap loads of, of power. So now we're going to run the exhaust out of here. So we're going to basically, let's create, um, yeah, we'll do, we do it like this, I think. Uh, not a junction pipe we're gonna need on here. We need a corner pipe. We're gonna all run them. Come on, I'm I'm having a having a moment. Bear with me. There, there we go. Right, we're gonna run all the pipes. Uh, actually, I think a nicer design. I I, I like the idea. Oh, took away the wrong block. Typical. There we go. Right, I quite like the idea of running them. It's a steam engine. It's got to have lots of pipe to pipe work, because you know that's what steam engines were like. So we have it going up there, I think. And a straight pipe, straight up. Certainly, this isn't going to be necessarily efficient. It's just I'm sort of thinking what would look 
Good, we'll put another corner pipe on here. I haven't, I'm not, this is not really a, uh, aimed at how to build a, uh, an engine. Because this is a very crappy engine. This is done just for giggles, for want of a better word. So put that there, and then we'll need to join all of these together. Um, that's going to be fun. Um, best way to do that, uh, that's going to be there. Let me just find I've got the right... Need a junction pipe. I'll work out which ones are going to be the correct pipes here. Okay, we're done, so we're going to have to... Let's run them all the way to the centre first. Okay, let's just do it this way. I'll go. So, finished the uh, engine. Just changed it a little bit and brought some pipes up through the centre. So we'll make that into a, a funnel when the engine's working. Hopefully that'll puff out a little bit of smoke. Um, just to make it look like there's uh, something going on. Uh, we've got some stairs down into the engine room and some fuel for the engine. Reduce the power of the engine a little bit. Uh, 3,400. Uh, as I said, no real re need for a lot of power on this engine. Uh, it's a steam engine. We got It's doing very little. Um, we will just have a few uh, screws on the back of here to propel it forward uh, when it's not working. So the next stage is we've got to finish off this deck. So we've got an arm of the deck and what I'm going to do is put a single level of metal over most of the deck area, wood at the front and maybe the very rear um, to protect against plunging fire. And then we will look at what is going on the top deck so uh, let me sort out the deck i know there's going to be a lot of cuts on this but uh, there's no point in you seeing all of me making and just placing blocks uh, just to keep the video a reasonable length so uh, let me get back to you when we've got the next stage ready to look at and just about done with the decking and also set ourselves up as the the um naval deck so we've got now the area where um, our guys would run around and also room for our mast now there's a couple of things i want to put on this extra now uh, and that is basically the smaller cannon because what i would like to do is have say a couple at the front and a couple at the rear maybe on a pintle mount now what we're going to use we're going to use a slightly different idea which is going to be the barbette now the barbette was the second way of doing it. It was before the turret. Some some systems used it as a turreted system, but the bar bit was an open uh, turret, uh, effectively, and, um, where you'd be protected from whatever was pointing at the enemy and some armour around the outside of it, but the actual gun itself would be open to the elements, so plunging fire would be a bit of a, could potentially be a bit of a problem um, for it, uh, but not, not majorly. So we're going to put, um, the, these are going to be what, what I suppose you could class as the chase guns. If we're heading towards someone, we want to be able to have some guns that will fire forward, uh, and these will be the fast-firing uh, smaller guns. So what we're going to do is create a little area to put them in. Now we will have to go over here and just see how big an area they take up. So they're um, so we want three by three. So we've got to allow it to spin in a three by three area. So what we'll do is we'll put. Um, how far does it need to go? So we're armor. Let's say we put it here, at this level. So we want three by three. Now the easiest way, if I use a metal block, is that would be one two three by one two three. Yep. So now we can put one of those just there and one behind it. And those in there. Well, we won't put it around the back because that's where our guys would have to go in there to to get into it. And we will put a bit of armoring on the front. Uh, let's see. Let's put one of those there, and we'll replace that one with a metal as well. So just to 
give it a little bit of armor and maybe this one here replace with a bit of metal also there we go that looks quite good Actually, I don't like that I'm gonna put that as a as a slope down like that there we go that looks good so now what we were gonna do is build up that here so basically it's it's similar sort of design to what we're already using but it's only one gauge and only one level of um, auto loaders instead of here it's got three levels of auto loaders so and um, we've got a lot more he and yeah two he and two two hardeners so let's see how this will go so new object two axis to it one axis and thinking about it we'll make this a little bit higher in a second but right now didn't start off facing forward by default so next we need to make sure we create our metal block um, got to make sure this is right here like that to contain our gun then uh, and in fact what we're going to do is got to think of the fire controller where the fire controller can go let's say we're going to put the fire controller here yeah okay that's fine so if we put that there And then we put our fire controller, local weapon controller, or just there. Can aim. Okay, so now the first thing we've got to do is we're going to get our, our guy over here because we're going to make sure that this will still turn. Because you can see I'm very tight on here and I've got my doubts whether that will actually turn successfully because uh, it will get jammed up. So that's because uh, it's not. And this is a common mistake, and I do it myself, in that I make this too tight. So let's go and get our guy, bring him onto this ship. The easiest way to do that is if I create a chair, put it just there, and tell him to come to it. There we go. Come off the build mode. Right, so now we should have... Can this turn all the way around? Yes, it can. So you can see that turret is turning all the way around, which is just what we want. That's making sure that it's working as I would like. So now we put on our um, firing piece, which I'm um, just looking at where that can go. Oh, but yeah, we don't have it near the front, so it's there. And then we've got our six way was behind. And we're going to armor up this front. Whoops, that's one place. Just there, there. So that's going to act as our like front shield. We'll put a gauge on the top. One gauge increase on there. And then we had about six um, barrels on this. So where are we? Cram cannons. Uh, we're just going to use some... Mm, let's see, what do we need? I'm just going to use a an elevation barrel and then two three let's see what that sort of gives us we don't we're going for high speed not really that accurate well put let's try a normal barrel on there as well I want to keep the the elevation high 80 degrees yeah that should be enough we don't need any any more than that I don't think and what was the size of it uh, 300 millimeters because we've got one gauge let's just check over here what we had on this gun just to compare now obviously this is slightly different uh, but it was 300 millimeters and I just had one two three four barrels on it so uh, but that was aimed at a uh, low we'll, 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 we'll do the same um, one two three. we might be able to Put a normal barrels on here. One, two. Let's see. So we've got four barrels. Yeah. So in, it's not that ac accurate. Um, but as I said, that's not the aim here. Let's put uh, auto loaders, and then we had some ammo boxes from memory. Oh no, no. I had uh, he and hardeners. Uh, hardener. 
HE. And I'm just going to put an ammo on the top and um, do change it a little bit. I'm going to put that there. Um, let's see what that gives us. That gives us a. Uh, oops, that, they obviously have not oh, connected to that. Yep, let's see. Uh, 2.7 reload time. Is that correct? One point eight four. So okay, that was a little bit better. It's because the ammo boxes are connected there and not on that bit. So I just need to change that. The ammo boxes, we take them off there. Are connected on the tops, and then we put uh, we take that one off there. We put some he in here. Let's see what that's done to my one point eight four. That's not too bad. Um, let's compare. 1.84. Yeah, that's that's going to be all right. Uh, now I've changed it a little bit. I've reduced the the uh, he parts a little bit on this, uh, so it's not quite as good. And now what I want to do is just oops, wrong way. Make it so that this is the, the front of the gun is shielded. I have it like that, I think. And uh, get it so it looks a little bit reasonable at least. I'm having one of those days with with with, with this uh, the damn buttons. There we go. Right. Okay. So that's giving us a little bit of cover, and we'll take. Oh, we'll go down here. We'll take that one out there, and we'll put for our AI. We'll put our uh, wireless receiver just there. And the other bit on this we want to ensure, because we're going to have some items in the way, we want to make sure that this does not fire. Um, it'll only fire forwards, basically. So we're going to look at um, uh, change the constraints. So first of all, we don't want it firing more across too far. Let's just increase the size of these here so we can see them a little easier. Uh, we don't want it firing... Say I'm going to be putting a mast up here, so we don't want it firing more than say about 10 degrees off the bow. And at the rear, we don't want it firing yet yeah, about about there's that would be fine. Um, max elevation, straight up. Max down. We don't want it firing, say, more than, say, 45 degrees. Or, say, about 30 degrees. There we go. Just about there. So that will be the closest it fires. That looks... Right, so now I'm ready to put on the sails to give it uh, some propulsion. So we'll see what we can get out of it just with sails before we put the propeller screws on. So to build up a sail system, we go underwater, sail main block. Now the first part of it is going to be this main block, which goes down in the corner. And that is, because uh, we're going to follow the schooner style, we're not going to go for square rigs, because they'll get in the way of the guns. So I'm going to go for a schooner style, as we've got over there. Uh, but they're not going to be quite as big, although it's going to be quite big. Um, next, we just put sail attachments everywhere. And they go along all on the beams. Now, I, you've noticed I've used beams just to keep the blocks down and give a bit of um, performance here. Now, so they've gone that way. Then we go up, and you'll see that the sail is quite happily creating itself. Now, on the top, we'll put a... Uh, one more. There we go. We'll put a... Weather vane, just so that we can see which way the wind is. 
and we might want to put one in this is the the uh, new deck area we might want to put one in here so that as the captain you can see which way the wind is going so you can know which way to turn and you can see it's already moving so that's good even with just that small amount of sail so we'll put some more on the rear as well now the good thing about these particular the round sails or this particular sail rather than the square sail is it will go into the wind and we'll put that up here now the only thing I haven't put on yet is a um, flag because we have to have a flag now one thing is uh, classical ships they tend to have a set of sails at the front uh, I can't remember what they're called, they're not a jib, uh, going forwards. But if you use these types going forwards, it will actually force it to go backwards. So we don't want to use them. So don't, even though it looks correct, you can't actually use them. They will cause it to go all over the place. Also, people have said about putting these things on spin blocks. And it does sort of work, but again, the... the it, the AI is not great using sails, and it just, I, I've had great problems trying to get it to go forwards um, using the spin blocks. If I put the square, square, especially square, but even this type, it just doesn't seem to work properly and such. So, okay, so the, 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 the wind, we're actually going upwind now, but we've still got a nice four degrees even on an upwind. Now the AI, I did not put in our bridge. You will see that it's only got the controls. I actually put that down below here, in this section. Uh, so that's where, in a nice little armoured box, because that's going to be a key point and target for all the incoming weapons fire. So we've got to make sure that that's covered. So um, let's see, what did we put in here, just to show you. Right, so um, most important things. Sailing algorithm. When you are building your AI, make sure once you put your right and left slot, include a sailing AI, otherwise it won't know how to use the sails. Um, sort of relatively obvious that one. Then, um, okay, one thing I'm going to put a patrol car in here and take out the aim point selection actually. Let me just see, there we go, that's better. Right, so uh, next was a naval AI, and what I've set the naval AI up is we're going to have quite a long range on these. These guns will go up to about 1800, I think, as far as a, a, a distance will go. So we'll say 1200 is a good distance for shooting. If it goes above 1500 for whatever reason, then it will start to chase and follow after it. Broadside angle, 80 degrees, that means it will turn to 80 degrees to the uh, target and start slightly going in, but try and get that broadside. If we get below 500, it will try to turn away and um, uh, increase the range a little bit. Uh, idle approach distance, 50, that's how close it will get to other ships. Turning circle, this is going to have a big turning circle. And because of the kill, it's got quite a high depth. And with all my ships, I just tend to disable reverse. I don't like using reverse, um, you know, letting the AI try and work out how to reverse the ship. It, it's, I've had nothing but problems um, with that and without that disabled. Okay, so we now have a working ship. Got to think of a, a, a name for it. Now I'm doing I'm the class. I don't know if it is the same as the Minotaur HMS Minotaur. I think that was a similar sort of build, but we're going to call this the HMS Minotaur for the moment. Uh, so and it's that's going to be the class of it. So if we save this vehicle as and we're going to put it into the Bretonians. So rather than the HMS, let's call this the um, the Royal Bretonian Navy, the RBN Minotaur. Now, the reason um, RBN um, the Bretonians. I'm just just calling it my this little let play as the Bretonians. So we're gonna cut cover some of the maybe US, but also H uh, Royal Navy. But I'm not gonna call them HMS. So it's gonna be the R Royal Bretonian Navy. 
Right, after a little bit of work on the ship, we've got the propulsion um, set up ready. Although I've made a little change to it in that to save fuel, um, the propulsion will only work when it's close. So it's going to use the sails to get close to within about 2,000 meters. Once it's within 2,000 meters, it will then use the turn the engines on. Now this was similar to how these first ironclads did actually work, in that they would use the sails, uh, sorry, steam-driven ironclads were mainly used for coastal defence, or close into the coast defensively, because uh, the steams were very inefficient and uh, just didn't work too well. So they'd have to only have a, a, boast a, a few days worth of fuel on board, coal, etc. Um, which is fuel for in this particular instance. Um, there was armoured cruisers, uh, which were generally sail-based. Most of their propulsion was sail. They you would have only the uh, the steam for if something was close. So this is the, the tactic I'm using here. So it's going to use sails when closing, and then turn the engine on once it's close enough to try and keep its broadside. So let's give this a go against some enemy. We'll see how we go against a Sinner's Luck again, and that will be another quick little fight. It's relatively easy, but this is just for a bit of field testing. So we'll see what the ranges of the guns are like now. As I say, not ideal. I wish it could be a bit better, I think. But possibly with the larger gauge now, they'll have a little bit more uh, firing range, hopefully. But we did survive against that river home, especially when we got in close, which shows that the armouring of the ship is working. So I'll just get in once we get close enough and we start to get some sort of um, uh, shooting, I will bring us back in. So the guns did start firing at about 1400 this time, which is good. So we're getting getting a, a little bit better range with this new guns. Although I think the uh, yeah the firing time is slower, which is understandable. But uh, with the longer range, that's not really a problem. Let's just see if if we are getting hits oh yes we are getting hits as well which is good and are we surviving against the hits coming in uh, the main bit is that well yeah take the sails being taken out is semi-understandable they are just wood after all it's these shots to the side yeah we're taking some to the bottom which is most probably not good we might have to armor the uh the key the keel a little And our, our weapons are doing steady damage uh, when they hit. The, 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 the small guns as well are doing some damage. And when the big hits come in, they are certainly uh, damaging it substantially. You can see how much is going. That's a, it's a big old ship that, ship that it is taking out there. Um, yeah, there we go. Look, uh, certainly at this range, what range are we at now? That's about the three, four hundred meter range. It's uh, doing significant damage now, when it hits. Still not always hitting. But we've got the small pintle mount guns also are doing a little bit of damage as well. 
Yeah, but look at those big guns. With those big guns, they're wrecking it. Excellent. This is the, just the sort of thing I was hoping it would do. Now, um, ideally, I think this will not be on its own. It's not a battleship. It's uh, still a close-range fighter. And I, it still has got some issues. There's it's still I think it will be very susceptible to missile armed ships, but against their own larger vessel. So that was a 3,000 block uh, vessel. And how big is our vessel? Our block vessel is 3,000 blocks as well. So that's okay. Overall, not unhappy with the ship, the Minotaur. It's a, uh, it's okay. It's got some good points. It was a good experiment. Um, any comments? Obviously, we'll leave them below. You know, let me know what you think about this uh, classic style of ship. You know, the next one I build will be a little bit maybe starting to head towards the the turreted design. Maybe even still with sails, but um, a turreted version. Um, Similar to, there's a couple of uh, Royal Navy ships, etc. Not um, larger than the Minotaur, so it's going to be similar sort of scale. But instead of these broadside in the casements, we might look at um, something a little bit more um, turreted, or we might go for something a little bit of a, as a fast frigate because this is still fairly slow. Maybe I need something which is a little faster, just with some small guns, um, etc. Any any other suggestions? But time period I'm looking at, if you want to look at what we're going to be building, is heading up to, say, the early 1900s, somewhere in, the, in that total period, 18, up to about 1890, somewhere in that sort of period. So any suggestions, send me a link, etc. But generally, until next time, keep playing, leave those likes and comments below, but above all, have fun!